I've always been really keen to optimize these two weekend workflows, washing the car and mowing the lawn. Now I've nailed the washing the car workflow, check out the video I've done on that. But with mowing the lawn, I actually kind of want to replace it altogether. I don't have any desire to be mowing the grass with any kind of kit. I want it done, but I don't want to do it myself. Now the robot lawnmower is the obvious answer for that. So is the robot lawnmower really good enough to replace my old lawnmower? The answer is yes, I've actually sold it. I don't have a normal lawnmower anymore. So the one I've got here is the Works Landroid and they've got a whole range according to the kind of size of grass that you want to cut uh, and the whole range of accessories that go onto those and I'll cover those in a minute. But basically uh, the price fluctuates a little bit so I won't mention the price on the video because it'll be out of date by the time you watch it. So instead I'll just link to the products below and you can go and check out the latest price on there. And if you do go ahead and buy one through those links, I'll get a little kickback to support the channel, so super appreciated. So the funny thing is when you tell people you've got a robot lawnmower, you, you get this kind of response, kind of dismissive, that they don't really believe that it can do what you're saying it can do. And I think that's true at the stage of, you know, if you're kind of researching one of these, thinking of getting one, you, you've got this doubt in your mind that it's actually possible for this tiny robot to replace your big noisy machine that you've been working hard with all these years every weekend. The reality is it really does actually stop you having to cut the grass. It does work. And they're not much more than a decent lawnmower either in the first place. Obviously, there's a little bit more upfront cost, but you've got to think about how much time it's saving you, what you can be doing with the time it saves you, and that's where the real value is. I actually bought this last year with the full intention of doing a video on it, but I did want to make sure I'd seen it right through a year so I could really comment on how well it works over a long period of time. So let's just go through some of those concerns that I think most people looking to buy a robot lawnmower will have, uh, and I certainly did when I was buying this one. So I think the first thing in my mind was how how does it actually work? You know, is it is it using GPS to create a pattern or track or whatever? Does it go over itself? Whatever. I wasn't quite sure how these things work. So with these smaller garden ones, the way they work is just a completely random pattern. You actually put a wire all the way around the garden and that wire is kind of sat on the grass initially and you can bury it if you want, but after a couple of weeks, the lawn kind of just pulls it down into itself anyway. So I didn't bother with that, but you peg it in all around, connect it up to the, the docking station. And then basically every time it bumps into that wire, it will change direction randomly and it covers the whole grass like that. Now it's actually really surprising how quickly it does cover the whole lawn using a random pattern. In my mind, I was kind of thinking if it was gonna use a random pattern, wouldn't it just miss a bit for like a week or whatever, right? You know, before it gets onto that bit. In reality, the random pattern covers everything surprisingly quickly within a couple of days so it goes out every day and after a couple of days you're very confident it's actually covered everything one of my main concerns was really am i going to be babysitting this thing all the time is it going to get itself stuck in a corner or you know between something and, and just like repeat itself over and over again that was one of my concerns with these random pattern sort of ideas is there going to be a situation where it will see the same trigger to change direction at a certain point and end up in a weird little stuck loop it's never happened in this garden and there's quite a lot of weird things going on i've got some various posts and trees i've got the steps and the charging station is just behind the steps so there's a sort of small gap that it has to get through there and it's managed it all absolutely fine if it does get stuck you sort of see it try various uh, different random attempts at getting out and it will always get out in a relatively short time sometimes you see it go back and forth a little bit and then it'll try a new angle and it'll it'll get itself out it's super impressive now I think many people are going to be concerned about how they would exclude the mower from certain areas in the garden like maybe if you've got a pond you don't want the mower to go in the pond how do you deal with that situation when it's obviously inside of your main perimeter so it's actually super clever the the wire basically if you come around your perimeter and then come away from the perimeter with the two wires together, they cancel each other out. So it can go straight over that bit where the two wires are right next to each other. So essentially, if you go around your perimeter and then come off the perimeter with the two wires together and then go round your exclusion area like the pond, and then obviously back again to the perimeter, it will essentially see the, the pond as an excluded area and just go over the bit where the wires are together. So that mechanism is really, really good, really simple. Uh, obviously works for, for up to a pretty big garden, but there's another thing that you can do, which I'll look at in a minute. If you've got a larger space, and you don't want to run those double wires from the perimeter to your excluded zone. Some of the reviews I saw were kind of mentioning how important it is that your ground is quite flat. And I was a little bit worried about that. You know, what is the tolerance there? Does it have to be a kind of manicured lawn before it will even work? Now, my lawn is pretty lumpy. There are some sort of ups and downs. Uh, it's a little bit quirky. It's sort of sinking in one place. And it's a little slope throughout as well. Uh, and it does, it is quite clear that it needs to be fairly smooth, fairly stable. Um, if there are little holes, it kind of can get stuck in it. And of course that drops the blade a bit close to the ground as well. So you do want to put a little bit of attention to keeping it flat just fill in the little holes with soil and, and let it grow through. 
Now, the other thing I was slightly concerned about is what happens if the wire gets cut? You know, how much of a hassle is that to deal with if you've got to replace the whole thing or what? Turns out they actually supply you with a couple of these reconnectors. So you can actually just plug both ends of the wire into the reconnector, uh, crimp it shut with a pair of pliers, and that's done. It's reconnected and you can bury the whole thing and it just works. That's a sort of sealed thing. You can see the grease inside it that seals it. Uh, so it works absolutely fine. I've cut my wire twice now accidentally just through leaving it sort of too high and not making sure it's flat all the way around on the grass. That's really important obviously make sure it's not sticking up anywhere. But the other question I had in my mind when I was looking to get one of these was how much manual intervention do they need? Are you actually doing anything with each mode? Do you have to put it away or charge it manually or anything? The reality is it's actually completely autonomous. It sets itself off when it needs to go out and it comes back and charges itself when it's finished and it does do all that by itself. So basically the entire mowing season, you just leave it out there. The only time you sort of fiddle with it are when you put it away uh, over winter in the garage or whatever, if you don't want to leave it out. The other question I had in my head was how long is it actually going to take to cover the whole lawn? Now, I haven't got a very big lawn and this is the smallest mower that they sell. Uh, but so I guess this will kind of depend on the size of the mower that you get. Uh, and how big your grass is but basically that random pattern is surprisingly quick at covering the whole grass in fact the first mow of this year um, that the grass was quite long and I just let it go and it, it had got it down I think it probably knew it was the first mow of the year so it spent a longer time doing it uh, but it got it down within a day there were a few little tufts that it got rid of the next day so it's that fast you, you know haven't got to leave it over a period of days and days and days for it to cover the whole ground the other question, of course, is what happens in the rain? Do they go out in the rain? Do they not go out in the rain? Uh, and this seems to vary by brand. The Works one that I've got here doesn't go out in the rain. It's actually got a rain sensor on the top. And if it rains, it says rain delay on your phone comes up, tells you that it's not going to go out because of the rain. And the reason for that is not because it's in any trouble in the rain. It's just that it doesn't want to mash up your grass when it when it's soggy and the soil is soggy. And I think that's a really good idea because there have been a couple of times where this, the ground has been a bit damp from previous rain and the, it's sort of churned up the mud a little bit. So I think it's a good idea that it doesn't go out in the rain. Other brands though do say they do just go out and rain or shine kind of thing uh, and it's quite capable of cutting the grass in the wet so it carries on but of course that doesn't really take into account that the soil is that bit soggy and the potential for mashing it up so I like the fact that it goes home when it rains. The other question, of course, is what happens with the grass. Now, these things cut the grass every day, so they're just taking a tiny bit off with the little razor blade blades, and that means those tiny bits of grass can just sink down, and then they will feed the grass as they rot into the ground. So there's no collection process needed, and it's because it goes out so frequently, you can never see this on the top. It's just tiny, tiny bits of grass that it cuts off. The first mow of the season when the grass was that bit longer, and I'd left it a little bit too late before I put it out, and I should have been a little bit more on that. Uh, it did obviously leave a, a dead grass sort of layer on the top, but that soon absorbed back down. The next big question, of course, is having kids as well, uh, is what happens if you leave something on the lawn like a, like a soft toy or whatever? The reality is in the default mode without the accessories, it will just plow straight over them. We did lose a few dog toys uh, in the early stages based on that. So you have to be pretty careful with that. You know, it's, it's fairly strict policy if you can't leave anything out on the grass. Now, if that is a worry for you, they have an accessory which will solve that problem, which I'll get to in a minute. So I mentioned the way of setting up an exclusion zone based on the idea of coming off the perimeter around the thing and then back down the wire again so they're, they're right next to each other before it meets the perimeter again. But if you've got a bigger garden and you want to set up an exclusion zone without doing that, they actually sell this off-limits kit, which is basically a sort of magnetic wire that goes around the edge. So there's no power to that wire at all and then a sensor on the machine. And it will treat that like the perimeter wire and that it'll bounce off it. But of course, it'll never hit that and try and go home on it. So that's a really cool system if you've got a bigger bit of ground. Now there's another way it deals with exclusions and that's that you can get this accessory which is like a radar thing on the front so it will actually avoid obstacles just based on if they're physically in front of it. Now I haven't tested that so I don't know what sort of size obstacle it would avoid or whether it would just go still go over a small toy or whether it would avoid it or not I don't know but if you've got stuff in the garden that you don't want it bashing into that's something to look at as well it's worth noting that this thing does need good wi-fi coverage where it's set up in the base station if you haven't got good wi-fi coverage where you're planning on setting it up in your garden i'd recommend using a mesh network to bounce your wi-fi signal over to your garden if you've got a garage or an outbuilding or something you can put one of these mesh nodes out there and extend your signal uh, there's a link in the description to the system that i use which i think is really good there's actually another accessory that they offer that can solve the Wi-Fi problem and that gives the machine its own SIM card and that has the dual benefit of it, it being able to find itself if it's stolen uh, so it can track itself based on the SIM card and you don't need Wi-Fi coverage for that in that case. 
So speaking of theft, there is a, a pin number that you can set up on this actually, which stops it being used. Obviously, if it's taken away, you can't start it without the pin number. So that's a pretty cool mechanism. So the app itself is absolutely fantastic that works with this machine. You can control the mower through the app, of course, but there's this also this setup process where you say what grass you've got and what your soil type is and all the rest of it. And that shapes the schedule for how it will cut that lawn. So it's really clever. And it looks at the weather and the time of year and all of this fancy stuff to work out how often it should go out. So you also get notifications through the app from the mower itself. So things like if it's raining and it's going home, it will tell you when it starts and when it stops. And if it hits anything or gets stuck or cuts its wire or finds itself outside of the wire, or anything like that, it will notify you and you can obviously go and deal with the situation. So it's great that it communicates back to you via your phone there. Obviously with an electronic device with a battery like this, you're kind of thinking, is, is that going to cause a hassle? How often do the batteries need replacing? Uh, is there a life cycle on those? And this thing uses the Works PowerShare battery. Obviously they've got this massive ecosystem of products that uses these batteries. I used to have the cordless uh, pressure hose. In fact, I really rate their, their products and they all share this battery. And it's really as simple as taking it out of the back of the mower and you could replace it or charge it separately if you wanted. But obviously it charges itself on its dock. And I haven't had any issues with this battery. Uh, I left it at a reasonable state of charge over the winter. I didn't leave it full or empty. Uh, I think that's important to do over the winter period where it's not in use just to maximize the life of the battery there too. So I moved mine into the garage over winter when it doesn't need to mow. You could leave it out or even just take the battery out and, and bring that in um, just to keep it off the cold temperatures. But basically it's happy in all weathers. You can leave it out. It doesn't need to be protected. Uh, they say to store it in a shady space. I think that's sensible for the battery temperature. Mine's obviously in the sun in the morning, but then it's in the shade in the afternoon. And I, I think the orange color has definitely faded quite a lot since I first got it in the sun there too. So that's worth thinking about. Interestingly, the setup process is much less of a hassle than it looks like it's going to be. You think you've got to peg this wire all the way around your garden. It's going to be quite a laborious, time consuming process. It is a little bit of a faff, but obviously you're only doing it once. I've actually done this twice for me because we've rearranged our garden a little bit and had the patio done. So I know what it's like to pull it all up and move it back again and try a different place. On the second time round, I just kind of pegged it out. I didn't measure anything. I just sort of roughly thought the wires about there from, from knowing how close it got to the edge based on the wire position previously. I just guessed it and that was actually fine I only had to make a very a few couple of minor minor tweaks to that wire so it's not super important that you go and measure it obviously if it's your first time using this you want to get an idea of where that wire should be and the instructions tell you how far it should be from various edges if it's an upright edge or if it's an edge that some of the mower can go over I think it's quite important that both the wheels stay on the grass I've got this patio edge at the front here and I could have one wheel go on the on the patio by moving the wire closer to the edge there but I think that difference in the grip of the two wheels on the different surfaces might cause issues. I might experiment with that though because it would be quite good to see the robot mower get that bit of grass right up to the patio instead of leaving the edge. Now obviously there is this idea of how close these things get to the edge and this is the version that doesn't have their closer edge pattern mode. Some of the more expensive models have this ability to get nearer the edge. I'm not quite sure how I'd feel about the blades being much closer to the edge of the machine anyway. Uh, I think it's quite sensible that they're tucked away from the edge a little bit. I don't mind just running around with a battery strimmer uh, once a week or two weeks just to get that edge bit that grows up around the sides. That's certainly not a major issue. So in terms of maintenance, I mentioned I take it in over winter to save the battery and just to keep it out of the weather so it doesn't get totally filthy over winter. Um, the other thing that you want to look at is obviously keeping it clean from, from a buildup of grass underneath, uh, but the blades themselves will probably need replacing once a year. I haven't done mine at all yet, so I'm going into the second year. I'm going to change them soon because they definitely look pretty rough. I think they will cut a lot better with some fresh ones. Now it's just tiny little razor blades, that's all it takes, so they're really cheap and certainly no trouble replacing those once a year, and they just screw on and, and new ones pop on. So Definitely no problem. It actually comes with a bunch of those as well. So you're set for a couple of years when you buy this. So once it's finished its random pattern, it actually just finds the wire wherever it may be. And that's how it finds its way back to the charging station. So when it's finished, it just finds the wire, goes you know goes in any direction till it finds the wire. It might be just after the docking station. It might be just before it, could be anywhere. Uh, so if, once it finds the wire, it follows it back. It knows which direction it's got to go on that wire and it goes back to the docking station and then it just clicks into place and you can see the contacts make connection with the docking station and it charges itself up in that position. Now that process has been really, Reliable. I thought that might be a little bit error prone, you know, if it, it overshoots it slightly or it misses the connection. Um, this, it's pretty important that docking station is flat. Uh, you don't want it at an angle because it kind of slides a little bit if it does that. The first time I had it, it wasn't quite flat enough and it did slide off uh, and it didn't make that good connection. So keep that level and then it works every time. I've had very, very little trouble with that connection process for the charging there. So I don't want to overlook this point either and that's that it's actually unbelievably fun to just watch this thing driving around. When you set the wire up, it's just like 
like playing with a train set when you're a kid, you know, you, you get that real sense of enjoyment about seeing the thing track along this path that you've made for it really close to the edge. When you set up a corner, like I've got around the steps here, so you, you set this up by making the wire go out and then back on itself in this kind of wedge shape. And when you see it go around that corner nice and square and nice and tight, you get this sort of tremendous sense of satisfaction that you've set this robot machine up to do this around your garden. That's fantastic, fantastic fun. So the other really rewarding part of having one of these is when you realize those moments where you, you can see the machine has been cutting the grass while you've been getting on with something else completely. And that's when it reminds you just that this is a, a real time saving machine. You know, you've suddenly recouped this time and it'll add up over a year to a huge amount of time that you've saved. Uh, and of course, you've got the space free in the garage. You haven't got to store a lawnmower and that's a big deal too. The end result is that you're going to get your grass cut by a robot and that's just amazing. This is definitely a product that I highly recommend and it is funny how people tend to have this kind of immediate reaction of doubt that it, how could it possibly be as effective as a normal lawnmower uh, but it is it really does work so if you're, you're thinking about one I would say just definitely take the plunge. So this channel is all about design usability and workflow I explore these kinds of products that save us time and improve our workflows and I cover all kinds of things from keyboards and computers software through to cars and workflows around all sorts of things around the home as well. Don't forget to like comment share and subscribe that's super appreciated it'll help others find the video and I'll see you in the next one.